For more on this, I'm pleased to be joined by Virginia Attorney General Jason Miaris. Mr. Attorney General, welcome. Great to be with you. Thanks so much for having me. So for a national audience, what is at stake in Tuesday's elections in the Commonwealth of Virginia? Well, I mean, what we've had since we won and shocked the nation in 2021, and we've had the Virginia Renaissance. We've seen Virginia go from one of the lowest states of, of recovering from the COVID closures, and now we're in the top 10, our economy, one of the lowest unemployment rates, record investment, both tax cuts and investments in, in law enforcement. But the reality is we've also seen a lot of great uh, part of our common sense agenda that's been blocked by a Democrat controlled state Senate. And so we wanna hold the House, flip the Senate, because right now everybody is seeing what we're doing in Virginia and this real Virginia Renaissance being led by Governor Yunkin and they wanna be part of it. But you're seeing a lot of outside money coming in trying to save what is the sinking ship of this far left agenda being pushed by Democrats. When they had control, when they had this far left liberal monopoly in Virginia, they banned gas cars, they, mm. they passed a variety of bills that made it harder for law enforcement to do their jobs. And so we want to get back to those common sense agenda that's been so successful. And that's really what's on the ballot this fall is, do you want to continue Governor Youngkin's policies in which he has sky high approval ratings in Virginia? Or do you want to follow the failed policies of Joe Biden, whose approval rating in Virginia is in the low 40s or high 30s? I think the voters have a clear contrast of who you trust more in governance. And I think mm. you're going to see those results on Election Day. If Republicans led by Governor Youngkin are successful in changing Virginia from totally blue a couple years ago to completely red after this election, do you expect calls for Governor Youngkin to jump into the presidential race to grow? Well, said I can't speculate that. I, I think the reason why people are, are, are asking those questions of Governor Youngkin is they see how successful of a leader that he's been. And, and, and Governor Youngkin, Glenn, loves to say the right leaders focus on the right priorities. From day one, it was, hey, we're going to get Virginians back to work. We're going to say parents matter. We're going to empower parents. We're not going to cut them out of the equation. We're going to back the blue. We're going to give them the tools they need to do their job instead of defund the police. And so he is really laser focused on those kind of core issues about building a better Virginia. And then you've seen some of this far left liberal policies when they tied our emission standards to Virginia to an unelected air quality board in California that then subsequently banned gas vehicles. Mm. Uh, and so all those issues are at stake right now. And it just shows you just how far to the left uh, the Democratic Party is. Even when the governor put a common sense legislative uh, measure to essentially say big tech, you cannot sell our children's data to a third party, mm. it got blocked. Uh, by this far left liberal progressives in the in the uh, state Senate. So the governor time and time again sides with law enforcement, sides with parents, sides with small business owners and sides with taxpayers. And time and time again, you're seeing that, particularly in the General Assembly, they really re they really view Joe Biden as a model. They view California as the model. And we like to say, do not California or Virginia. Attorney General Jason Miaris of the Commonwealth of Virginia. Thanks very much for your time today. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.